great turnout. How exciting. My name is Jay Chase. I'm the senior planner here in Scarborough. And let me be the first to welcome you to our kickoff of the comprehensive plan update. So this is going to be a long or it's going to be an exciting process that will take <laughs> just a few short months of good, fun work, is what I should say. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction tonight. We're really here to hear here to hear from our consultants about the process that they're going to help engage us with so we can begin to define the, the future of Scarborough. Um, really building on the work that we have done from our previous comprehensive plan, big thick book. We're envisioning the next comprehensive plan to be a bit more dynamic, hopefully on all your coffee tables once it's written and you'll <laughs> be thumbing through it nightly, I'm sure. Um, so with that, let me first uh, introduce other staff that I work closely with. Karen Martin is the tech co-director and interim planning director. Um, there are a few others here from the planning department. Angela Blanchett, and Carrie Grantham, our sustainability coordinator here in the front row. Um, I would just like uh, if council members are in the room could just stand and say hello. That would be great. So we could know who's here. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, and so working with counselors and staff in Tom Hall, town manager in the back, and there's other staff here that I've seen. I think they've all taken a seat at this point. Um, we're working closely with our long-range planning committee, which by charter really helps, helps uh, staff forward this process, which is really a process that's driven by you all, all the folks that are going to be involved in all the uh, events that will be coming up in the coming months and year um, and all the following discussions. So again, um, I'll ask uh, any members of the Long Range Planning Committee who are here, if they could please stand and just say hello so let folks know your name if you wouldn't mind. Judy, maybe we'll start with you. You could just... Judy Roy. Corey Sullivan. Dave Merrill. Alan Paul. Jeff Hall. Okay, and so we're missing two of our members. Thank you all. Um, Susan Angeles and Rick Cheney. Um, so. These are the folks who will help be helping review the plans and helping uh, through the public process. Um, let's see, I guess just other piece of housekeeping. I'd ask people to sign in if you haven't already. Don't have to do it right now. Now it's fine. We're at the end of the meeting. Um, and so maybe it uh, looks like Karen's going to be sending it around. So if you haven't already signed in, please do so. So without further ado, like I said, really here to introduce folks to our consultants. Brian Wright and Sandrine Tebow, and so I'll invite them up and turn over the front of the room. Thank you. All right, um, so we're thrilled to be here, and um, I'm really glad to see they're pulling chairs out of the closet. Um, that's wonderful. Um, one thing I have learned, though, about being here is um, if you just, you guys have so many committees. As long as you invite the committees, you can always fill a room here. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. We work all over the country, and you guys have more committees per capita than any other town or city, big or small. Um, so congratulations, you win a prize, but also congratulations for being so civic-minded and being willing to dedicate your time um, to your town. Uh, that's unbelievable. So um, I'm going to go through a quick presentation, and Jay said that you know we're here to you guys are here to hear from us, um, but actually we're here to hear from you. Uh, so what I want to do is start off with a presentation just to kind of introduce the project, like what in the world we're we doing, because um, not everybody's been on the Long Range Planning Committee or been involved in the conference or plan before. Um, and then really just open up um, for, you know, sort of initial thoughts and questions and comments and things from you guys. So um, let's see, here we go. So. Um, it's not just me. Um, there's also Sandrine, who's in the back of the room. Um, Sandrine's going to be working on the project. She's a project manager. Yeah, she's, she's taking pictures over your, the back of your head. Um, so, um, and then we also have other team members who you won't meet now, but you'll meet later. Um, some of them are um, really experts on the um, sort of ins and outs of the infrastructure side of things. We also have somebody whose uh, focus is resiliency, as you look at things like sea level rise and all of that. Uh, and we also have a transportation engineer, um, because uh, if we've heard one thing, um, we've heard that you guys have some uh, traffic issues you might like to work on. 
Um, and so, uh, so that's uh, the team that will be uh, engaged in the project. So um, if you haven't heard, I'm from LA. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm actually originally from Alabama, uh, and uh, I came to Nashville by way of DC. Uh, so now I've come here to you from Nashville. Um, and the thing that I'm excited about is so far I've only met three people from here. Uh, so I don't feel like such an outsider, which is great. Um, and uh, how many people besides the three, or in addition to the three that I met are from here in the room tonight? Cool. Okay. Sorry, from Scarborough. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Born and raised. Born and raised. All right. Awesome. So, um, so that's exciting, though, um, because what it means is that we have, you know, lots of different perspectives. Um, some who've been here and seen it all. Uh, seen the changes that have occurred and, and um, seen different times from the past and, uh, and those who come from elsewhere who have seen other things and it really makes an interesting discussion and dynamic um, to sort through as we think about planning for the future. Um, so uh, for those who haven't been to the South, this is what the South looks like. Um, this is my main street. Um, this is actually in Franklin, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Founded in 1799. We're like a little bit behind you guys. Um, but for the South, that's pretty new. I mean, pretty old. Um, and so, uh, as I said, we work all over the country and um, we help communities like you guys um, figure out uh, how, to, how to articulate and crystallize uh, your vision for the future. Um, because we work everywhere, um, we can't just take uh, what we do in one, you know, we're working on the conference of plan for Snowmass Colorado right now. Not very relevant to what you guys are doing, except they're very focused on sustainability, outdoor recreation, a lot of the things you guys are. And so we pick up little things in these other places that we can then bring to you guys and say like, hey, have you thought about this? You guys are already doing this, but what about that? And so there's a lot of things like that, um, that you know, sort of the, the gift of working all over the place. Um, but it also means we're, we're outsiders um, nearly every project we work on. Um, the thing that's great about that though is that I have, we have no preconceived notions we don't know about the past and your history and the, the things that you've struggled with. All we see are, are you know, the, you guys here willing to participate um, and really, you know, open, uh, an open book. We're here to learn the story, uh, your story, as we start to figure out your future with you. So, so that's a little bit about it. our approach um, is, uh, as Jay said, important um, that we build on a firm foundation. You guys have done an incredible amount of work. Uh, we started our timeline back in 2004, but I'm sure it goes back for than that. We just ran out of room. Um, and somehow something happened in 2011, and you guys got to work. Um, there was a lot going on then, too. Um, but in between, you did your original, uh, the comp plan that we're building, what we're doing off of, and have had um, amazing success of implementing. And, I, and the only thing that I can figure out is maybe it's because of all these committees. Like you feel like, well, I'm on a committee, I better do something. I better have something to show for all the time that I'm spending. Therefore, we go and implement these plans that we do here. That's, what that's, that's my theory so far, so we'll test that. Um, but what I like is, um, is working in a place where people do things. Uh, and you'll, you'll hear more about that uh, in the future. So the way that we approach things is looking very holistically at it, um, looking at all of the different constituent parts and pieces of the community, recognizing connections between them. And so we know that if we you know, pull on something over on this side of the circle, it has an impact on this side and all around. And once we recognize those connections, then we can start to come up with innovative solutions for you know, the various issues or things you want to address. Um, and so that becomes a really fun process because it's exciting to see the community start to think about things in, in ways maybe that they haven't before. Um, and, and then also to teach us the ways that they've done things before. Uh, and so innovation happens through the process. Um, for those who don't know, so I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning of what's a comprehensive plan. So a comprehensive plan is really a long-range policy document it's establishing the vision for the future of the town. Um, it's providing policy guidance for growth and conservation uh, also, it's not just about growth. Um, and, uh, and it also has actions that are directed at you know, uh, moving forward this vision. Um, and so. In the comprehensive plan that we're working with for you guys, the elements um, that we are currently looking at are conservation and growth, economy and jobs, uh, natural systems and resiliency, sustainability, environmental and fiscal, so all sorts of sustainability there, um, mobility, health and safety, and the built environment and urban design. Um, and urban design is in like quotes. When we say urban design, that's just a term for like 
Uh, I say urbanism is when two or more buildings face one another, right? So this would be like, you know, a bar and in a silo, right? That's urbanism. Um, but we try not to use the word urban in a place like this too much, so we don't want to freak anybody out. Um, uh, the other thing is that um, you guys are uh, looking at this uh, SAR Communities um, program, and so we're going to be incorporating that uh, into it as sustainability tools for assessing and rating communities. Um, and so we'll be incorporating that into the discussion and throughout the process. Um, now, we have these things sort of separated into, you know, um, different sections or chapters, if you will, on the screen here. We haven't begun, uh, actually, the plan. So those who are here to see the plan, you're a little early. Um, but, the, um, but really the way that we think about it is all of these elements, it's really hard to break them into chapters because they all are so interwoven. That holistic model starts to show itself throughout the plan as well. And so there's so many components um, in one chapter that can you know, relate to the next chapter. And so as you start to um, get to the point where there's a draft to review, you know, someone say, well, could you just give us the, you know, this chapter as you do it and let us look at that? And then that can, wouldn't even make sense uh, in a lot of cases. And so we like to really kind of give you guys the, the entire document. Um, so one thing that you might um, find that's different about our approach, um, maybe, uh, than if you've ever looked at other comprehensive plans or even your, your current comprehensive plan is that um, we really focus on the idea of relevant data. Because um, we know that you know, data, uh, it starts off in stacks um, and then it turns to piles. Uh, and then the next thing you know, you're drowning in data. And there are a certain number of small groups of people in this room uh, and in this town who can handle that um, and, and that's fine. But the average person, most people, can't deal with just you know spreadsheet after spreadsheet with pie charts and all of this stuff. And so what we do is actually find the relevant pieces of data and only give you what you need. And we start to we present it to you in the form of infographics. Like you know, you open a magazine today and you can like take in all kinds of information because they boiled it down and they've made it graphical and really user friendly. And that's the way that we approach the data side of a comprehensive plan. But more important than the data are the insights. It's what we learn from that data that we then can go do something with, right? And so those insights are where you start to find opportunities and innovation for the future. And so those are the things we'll be focusing on. So if you're looking for a really, really thick, um, comprehensive plan uh, to come out in the future and there's just tons and tons of, you know, the way I, the way I talk about it is a lot of times the comprehensive plan is set up like, here's the plan, and here's the prove it, you know, and the prove it is for like the, the few people who, who actually will be willing to do that. Um, what we'd rather do is say, well, we, we've given you enough information for those who are into data to prove it. Um, and if you want more, then here's the, the source and the citation. You can go look for more. But what we want is for every, you know, you guys chuckled when they talked about having it on your coffee table. Like, that's no joke. Like, what we, the, when we write a plan, we really do write it for you to be able to read it. Like, because you want to. Not because there's some development dispute or, you know, whatever the reason why you normally look at a comp plan. We want you to have the comp plan out on your coffee. We want you to walk into a store. We want you to go get a lobster roll and, you know, oh, like, yeah, there's the comprehensive plan. They're on the table. And this is what happens in some other communities that we work in. They, they, these plans are so user-friendly that people read them cover to cover and understand for the first time, the town in a way that they never have in the future that they were trying to articulate through the process. And so that's really what we're going to focus on. So as you see this process, hopefully the process will also be dynamic, but the plan itself, when it comes out, will be exciting. So the way that we're, we're doing this plan, um, we're thinking of it as sort of a hub and spoke um, model. Um, and there's a, a long range plan committee and staff um, and uh, and they are basically working with all of the subcommittees, all of the you know, bazillion committees that you guys have, um, and, uh, and gathering information from those committees. So some committees are currently working on uh, their report for, you know, whatever their specific topical expertise area is. Uh, and then other committees aren't working on a report, but they'll be actually creating uh, input to give to us. And so that the, the committee that you saw there, uh, put up earlier will, will basically just become um, a way to sort of make sure that all those committees are, are kind of getting at us what we need and we need it. Um, and so rather than in like a lot of communities we work in, there's um, the idea of the steering committee um, and you know the steering committee is kind of leading the ship and, and really controlling the, the project and the output and all that. 
What we find is that that leaves a lot of pe people feeling left out. Um, and maybe that's why you have so many committees. At least you're on one committee. Even if you're not on the other committee, at least you don't feel left out. But, you know, what we, what we want to do is, is make sure that, um, you know, that it, it, it doesn't seem like or feel like or it isn't, in fact, a small group of people determining what goes in your comp plan. And so as we go through this process, we'll use this group um, to help pull these things together, um, to help get the word out, um, because at the next meeting, we want to have twice as many people. Um, and, and then also, as a sounding board, so when we hear things from you guys or from you know, different input opportunities we have from the community, there are questions that come up, and we don't get to ask the person you know, what they meant by that. And so sometimes we'll go to this committee, and we'll say, like, Hey, like we, we, well, we think of it as a think tank. Um, hey, we help us think through this. We've got these six questions that have come up. What, what's your take as a local on this topic? Uh, and so, so that's kind of the role of, of the committee. And then here's all, all the subcommittees um, I, I talked about also. Um, and then we'll be pulling all of that together, um, drafting you know other parts of it, writing it in one voice, creating you know the, the whole um, outreach process. Uh, and really trying to make it as transparent and, and interactive of a process as it, as it possibly can be while still getting you guys something in a timely manner. Because that's the thing that I still need to research, what you guys are doing here, is how you're actually finishing things when you have so many committees. Because if you're writing something by committee or doing things by committee, you, you must have a secret solution here that many places have not figured out. And so I want to learn, like, how do we... How do we do that with, these, with the committee structure here? Um, but we want to make sure that we don't lose you through the process. Because the one thing I know is the people who will always stay involved in a, pro in a project from the beginning to the end are the naysayers. The people who are excited about it, they come, they, they get excited. I like this. Certainly everybody else likes it. I come to a few more meetings. And now it's like we're in month six. And like, OK, every time I go, I've got to get child care. It becomes a problem. Well, everyone else like, so I'm just going to stay home now. And the only people who are left at the end of a you know, multi-year process are the naysayers. And so what we need to do is make sure that, one, we keep you engaged. Uh, our goal is to always have more people at the end than we did at the beginning because it is fun and interactive. And you, and you start to see your thoughts and ideas reflected and represented in the plan. It's not just a plan that you gave some input and, oh, that's a nice plan. Like, you actually can say, like, oh, that was, that was an idea I had. And that's what I want to have because our approach is to, so, so often a, a community has a, a yes-no on-off switch when it comes to any topic. It's, it's, it is or it isn't, right? And so what we try to do is find a way without doing some sort of watered-down hybrid thing where everybody loses equally. We want to do something where we create something for everybody, right? And so if, you, if your, you know, preferences for how you live is you've got, you know, multi-acre, you know, uh, piece of property in the woods or your house tucked away and you don't ever have to see anybody, Fine, that's for you, but there's also opportunity for somebody who wants a, a tiny lot, who wants to be on top of their neighbors, as some, you know, some might say if you live in the woods, in a, in a neighborhood where it's much more like a historic you know, New England village, and, and you've got small lots and smaller houses pulled up to the street, all of those kind of things. So there's that, and there's this, and there's single-family houses, and there's maybe row houses, and there's also opportunities for, you know, whatever your version of what you're, what's appropriate for you guys. And then we've heard there's been concerns about multifamily here recently, all of that. And so when I hear this concern about multifamily, what most people imagine is the massive apartment complex surrounded by a sea of parking, and it doesn't fit in with the character of the community. And so in the end, you kind of give it up something to get that. Um, and so, but we've also, on the other hand, heard about, um, you know, needing to have more housing types to address some of the affordability concerns you have as a community. So we're going to go through all of these kind of things together um, that sometimes are difficult to talk about, sometimes are heated and contentious and all of that. Um, but it's going to be an open process and everyone is going to feel like they've been heard uh, and everyone is going to be listened to and have their opportunity to participate in it. We're not going to shut people down through this process. And one of the things that, um, that people often criticize me for as well. You let that person go on too long. That person was complaining, you let them go on. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to shut them down, and then they're going to leave, and they're going to not be any more happy, and they're not going to feel any more hurt, right? So I have an amazing amount of patience for listening. I'll sit here and I'll listen every time we have a presentation. I'll sit here until you're all done talking. And, you know, if you guys have to go home and somebody's going on, I get it, I, I understand that. Um, but I don't want you to get frustrated with that process because there's a method to my madness 
um, that really works. At the end of this process, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to all feel like, wow, that process was great. I didn't get everything I wanted maybe, but I really feel like that was a fair and valid process, and that's important to me as anything we write in this plan. Because I know that most communities we go to today, one of the biggest struggles they have is with their public input process. If people feel like they've been left out, people feel like things are being done secretly, people feel like, you know, you name it, and, and people are concerned about it. And so we really, really want you all to feel like you've had a great process. So if you don't feel like that at any point, I need you to just check me and let me know, um, and, and we'll sort it out. Um, so um, current vision. Um, you guys in your uh, last plan uh, talked about, or your current plan, I should say, talked about continuing to be one of the fastest growing municipalities in Maine, um, having a robust and diverse local economy. Um, this is for those of you who don't read it and haven't memorized the plan. So, um, the, uh, it continues to have one of the most productive and diverse ecosystems on the uh, New England coastline. Uh, we'll maintain uh, marine uses, both commercial and recreational, continuing to identify and preserve historic home settlements and sites continue to identify and designate growth areas and limited growth areas will include housing that meets the needs of a wide, wide range of household types and will proactively grow the capacity and type of movement of goods, services, and people through and around the town. And there are many more. These are just a few highlights. So this was a teaser to you excited to go back and look at them. Because again, we're not starting from scratch. We're building off of where you have already come from. Um, so these are some of the, the, uh, the gems that we saw in there that we pulled through. Now, We've also been asked to look specifically at um, a few areas uh, of the town uh, for some specific planning. So that's another thing we do differently than you see in a lot of comprehensive plans, mm -hmm. is that we actually will, in areas that have been identified um, for you know, opportunities to, to create places, uh, is we'll actually do some specific planning for them. And this planning is not intended to be the plan for that area and to say that this has to happen right here. And so we'll I mean, we'll take liberties. There, are, for instance, if some a community says we want to transform this, you know, auto-oriented suburban area into a walkable mixed-use village node. Um, well, if every use that's there is currently auto-oriented, we have to show that difference, right? Uh, and so we literally will just draw on top of what you know, property that people own, and it's as an inspirational concept for people to see, like, oh, if. When we say transform and walk, well, that's what that means. And now we can assess whether or not we actually liked that because you know we're using, we're using this lingo and this, this sort of you know planning buzzwords. Um, and now we want to make sure we actually like it. And so we'll draw plans and we can test ideas um, about that specifically in this planning. So this is one area, uh, Oak Hill, and what it says right now uh, for Oak Hill is, um, in the current comp plan is that it will continue to evolve as a mixed-use area that functions as Scarborough's community center. So that's what it says, uh, the directive, which is why it's called out for us to look at it in detail. Um, but these detailed planning studies are just a small portion of the plan. It's just, it happens to be the most uh, easy to talk about because it's super tangible. You can see the plan, you will have artist renderings, you can say, oh, I love that, or I don't like that. Whereas if we're talking about some sort of a, um, a fundamental guiding principle, it's a little bit you know, ethereal to talk about those. Um, so, uh, so that's what we're, um, we're working with in, in Oak Hill. Uh, and then in Dunstan, um, it says, in the current comp plan, it's an attractive mixed-use community center that provides a range of goods and services to meet the day-to-day -day needs of residents of the area as well as commuters and tourists. So um, one of the things that we've, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll talk to you about what we've heard so far. Um, so outreach and engagement, um, we need you guys to stay connected, um, even when there aren't things going on. And so um, there, the town webpage will have information on that, but there's, I think we're also going to be setting up a, a Facebook page specifically for this project, so you can go there and easily find it all. Because sometimes it's on the town webpage, it's sort of, there's all sorts of other stuff as well. Um, and so we want you guys to have a, a forum to be able to go there. I know not everybody's on Facebook, and I think we can set it up so that you don't have to like be a Facebook member to, to look at it, um, but I'm not sure about that. Um, either way, don't worry. We'll make sure that you have uh, some way to, to take a look and participate in that. And there we'll be, we'll be posting you know, things like presentations and you know, work that's been done and ideas that we've heard and ask you questions you know, like, hey, you know, can you answer this thing? And sort of using you, you all and the whole community as a think tank as well. Um, so that'll be coming up, and once we have that address set up, we'll send that out to everybody. 
Um, so make sure you definitely sign in and put your, your email address on there if you have one. So the most important thing, though, is be, you know we have this small group of people that is this long range planning committee, right? The reason why we don't have a big group like you used to is that we believe that the real way that we get the input for this project is through face-to-face, hand-to-hand interaction. And so we have the TPDC plan of the process. And it sounds, um, some people think it sounds super fun, some people think it sounds super frivolous, um, but either way it comes. Uh, so the, um, what we want to do is have engagement that is actually engaging. Everybody talks about, we're doing public engagement, and they come, and you come, and they bore you to death. Right, um, and so we want to get away from that, and so um, you know what happens is we're actually going to come, and I'm going to bring my team, and we're going to set up our office here for three days, um, and I'm, we're not sure what the venue is yet. We're trying to find a really great centrally located place where everybody feels comfortable going, um, and it's the entire thing is open the whole time, and so what we're going to be doing is we'll have um, we'll have sort of an introductory presentation to get some you know some different details about what we're talking about tonight. And then we'll do a hands-on workshop uh, where we'll, you guys will actually be planners for the night. We'll have maps out on the table. We'll roll up your sleeves. We'll give you markers and dots and all. It's a very interactive process. So it's really helpful for us. It's a good way for us to extract information from you um, in, a, in a very focused way um, on the map of the town. Um, we'll have specific meetings following that on, on different, the different topics that are related to the comprehensive plan. Um, so sort of roundtable meetings, um, which and you guys have committees that I imagine we very well attended, but anyone can come, not just if you're on that committee. Anybody who has an interest in those topics can come and participate uh, in those. And then we'll have also, um, a, um, my team is there, we'll actually be, what you see here, we'll actually be doing work while we're there. It's not just a touchy-feely, come tell us what you think and talk again. Um, we're actually going to be working and you're going to hear noise and my team's going to be in the room where the meetings are so they can hear what we're all saying in real time and we're going to be tearing off sheets of paper and drawing and writing and making maps and GIS and all of this stuff happening in real time so that as you say, like, oh, well, whatever you do, don't do this, you'll hear in the back, somebody erasing, <laughs> you know? And so we, it's a very, very cool process. Um, and at the end, you'll actually see work, we'll present it all to you. Here's what we did based on what we said, and, and give you an opportunity to give us feedback again and say, are we on the right track? Are we heading in the right direction? Um, and so that's very fun. Um, what are the dates on that? September 25th and the 28th. September 25th to the 28th. So put that on your calendar right now. The dates on the next slide. Huh? The dates are on the next Oh, the next slide? Oh, no, no, the next one. One. So this is what <laughs> happens at the end of Planet Palooza, right? We didn't make those signs, by the way. Um, this is in Lewiston. We did their comprehensive plan. In Lewiston, I don't know if any of you have spent time there, but they're known for making these signs. And so you enter the room from the back. Uh, and so all the elected officials came in the back of the room and they're like, oh no. Because normally the signs say, you see, get out of town. I can't believe you're doing this to us. And they walked around and they saw this and they're like, oh, this is unbelievable. What have you done to our people? Um, and so this is what we hope you guys will be inspired to do, um, but uh, it was it was great. I love this, and I'm so glad we took a picture of that. Um, so here's the save the date. Um, that was tonight, um, and then there's the plan of Palooza, um, the 25th through the 28th. So I'll pause. You know, I don't see anybody putting that on the calendar right now. And you got to send that out to all your friends, right? So each of you needs to bring at least three people, um, and that'll be unbelievable. Um, uh, I don't know what you guys think a good turnout is in this town, so uh, it, it always varies, you know. Um, but we don't measure um, the success of the process by the number of people, but it certainly makes it more fun. Um, the more personalities and the more perspectives that we have, um, it's actually uh, awesome to get more people in the room. Um, so, Sandra, are you going to talk about the milestones here? Or is this something I'm supposed to cover? Okay. I'm terrible at dates, so I'm going to be totally mess this all up. Um, so anyway, here we are um, now uh, with the kickoff. Um, we're going to have data gathering. Committees will be working on things uh, throughout the summer. And the other thing is, the other part of the of the input, it's not just only the plan and so that's, that's an amazing part that you really need to participate in, but also staff is going to be doing a bunch of work with you guys, um, probably coming out to the different neighborhoods, the different
like a village, you guys have just, you know, sort of really neat distinct neighborhood areas. They're going to be coming out to you uh, and having opportunities um, for that, you know, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. The thing we're going to try to do is make sure that you don't get worn out doing those other things and think you already said everything you have to say and not come to play to lose up. Um, so that'll be a, a little bit of a, a dance there. Um, but there will be, you know, lots of opportunities to participate as uh, we want. Planapalooza, as I said, 25th through the 28th. Um, then once we get done with the Planapalooza, we're going to go away for a little while, and we're going to, like, really get to work and put our heads down um, and, and start, you know, drafting the plan, working on all of that, um, and making sure um, that we've um, gotten, gotten to the point where it's ready for it to go. First thing we'll do is we'll send it to staff. Um, to make sure we haven't made any like you know grievous errors and like you know accidentally put you know the wrong town name in there or something you know just just you know silly stuff right just typos and that kind of stuff um, because what we want to do is really get it to you know the public at large in the purest form without that sort of being pre-edited and censored and, and all of that um, and so uh, so then um, we'll have uh, more engagement opportunities the draft plan will come out we'll come back to town to present the plan to you guys. Um, I'm not going to read it all to you, but we'll you know, sort of walk you through it so you know what you're looking at um, when you go home and get to study it. Um, and then we'll be preparing the final plan after that. Um, there will be opportunities for you guys to give input, um, you know, sort of written input, and then staff will collect all of that. Um, that will come to us, and you know, they'll actually give us a specific set of you know, comments on, you know, think you do this, do that. Uh, and then the final version will go out and start the official adoption process in which you'll have another, more opportunities to go and, and give input on. Hopefully by then though, we've done so much um, and you've given your input that it's really like, yeah, it, that is what we talked about, awesome. It's not like you need to, you know, a bunch of changes to be made during that process. Um, so the, the plan of Palooza and all the things that lead up to it aren't the official adoption process. It's just an amazing additional um, uh, step uh, or steps that allow you guys to give input in a really meaningful way. Um, so um, this is, uh, we put this in the, the front of our plans. Uh, it says, warning, this plan should not be filed. Um, this is, uh, we say, keeping our plans off the million dollar shelf because nearly every city or town we go to has a shelf in the planning department where they put all the plans that they paid lots of money for to die. And they just sit there and collect dust. Um, this, in fact, was uh, Sandrine. I didn't say that Sandrine was our client. She works for the city of Burlington as their planner. And she hired us, they hired us there, and then she came to work for me, so it's great. Uh, so she at least liked working with us. Um, but, but this was her, this was her million dollar shelf, right there. That, these are all plans, old plans that have been done. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we don't do something for you uh, that you don't want to implement, because we know you like implementing. Um, we need to make sure that uh, the plan that we do is, has the essence of Scarborough in it that it is of this place, it is not of, you know, we're also working not, not just in beautiful places like Snowmass, Colorado, we're also work doing the conference of plans for West Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, and West Fargo, North Dakota um, is, uh, has called us in because they, real, they know they really need help transforming themselves. Um, some places we go, we're just helping them get a little better. Some places we're helping them preserve what they have and they love. Um, but we know that we can't just do the same thing here as we do everywhere else. So it has to have the essence of this place in it. And as I said, it has to have something for everyone. Everybody. All different, you know, people who've been here forever, um, you know, the young professionals that we see around that, you know, most cities are trying to attract, and um, the families that are here, some for the schools, the people who retire here. And, um, and one of the things that we've really um, been struggling with and learning about is the fact that there are certain scenarios that may cause people to actually have to move out of town mm -hmm. when they get to a certain point in their life, when they can't drive or don't want to drive or don't want to take care of their house, um, and they can't afford, you know, something that's really uh, expensive uh, to the living uh, community. Uh, and so we want to make sure that there's something for everyone at every stage of life and every preference, um, and you know, that really speaks to all of you that you can all get behind. Um, so here's some of the things we've heard so far. Um, we need, we've heard that people want to see more housing affordability, more housing types, complete street implementation, uh, need for a town center. Um, we've heard that there's no identifiable like heart of the community, like a physical place. Um, we've heard that um, we need to have an overarching community-wide vision, uh, one, sort of one 
one vision, one voice kind of a thing. Um, great schools are attracting people here, which is wonderful. A lot of places we go, they have got to get the schools going so we can get people to want to come here. You've already taken care of that. Lots of recreation opportunities. Um, the fastest growing town in the state. That's awesome. Great fact. Um, need for a community center. Lots of opportunity for more growth. Um, transportation capacity issues, especially along Route 1. Um, we have proximity to Portland is a real, you know, one of the big benefits you guys have. Uh, great amount of land um, conservation going on. Beautiful beaches, uh, various identities and neighborhoods, um, and then uh, plenty of capacity for uh, water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, so these are just some of the things that we've heard. Um, and now, um, finally, I'm done. Um, I am dying to hear from all of you who are sitting here. Um, so we don't have a pastor on mic, so I'm going to uh, repeat the question so that they can get it on the TV because I'm sitting here surrounded by microphones. Um, so who wants to go first? And again, I'll sit here as long as you guys are willing to talk with me, um, even if all the restaurants do close. <laughs> We've been here for a few days, so we know. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so my, our firm, the question was, what's the name of the firm and where is it based? Uh, so the firm is called Town Planning and Urban Design Collaborative, and um, I am in Nashville, uh, and I'm the founder, so I guess we're based in Nashville, but we are all around. Uh, Sandrine's in Montreal, um, and so we, but we come to wherever the project is. And I just have a question about communication. <coughs> Yes. 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 Yeah, that's a great point. Um, and and to that end, um, those things will be done. It will show up because we face this every community we go to. Um, uh, not everybody's on the internet. Um, the um, I know. So for, in preparation for this event, there was lots of newspaper coverage and those kinds of things. Um, I know that you guys had success um, with the mail survey uh, last time for the plan, a mail app survey. Uh, so we may do things like that. Um, but I think, I'm sure, um, there's probably a communications committee around here um, that's going to help us make sure that we don't have any missed ups because we definitely don't want to leave anyone out. Absolutely. Good point. Thank you. All right. Come on. We can't be shy. Yes. I'm going to ask one. Uh, you were mentioning that people can come during the three-day process and they give you input and you collect that and people are in the back writing it all down. <coughs> well, there could be a group that is, has an agenda yes. and they're going there and that's the only information you're getting. Yes. And so is that going to be then incorporated into the plan? Uh, or I know that there's many processes after that, but that's what you feel then that that's the town desire. Right. So how do you overcome that? Yes. Um, that's a great question. So how do we overcome um, sort of a, a special interest group coming with a particular agenda and sort of overwhelming the plan of the process? Um, we've, we've done this a lot. Um, and what we find is that um, no one's ever been that well organized um, that they could actually sort of usurp the process and keep everyone else away. Um, and I'm very good at um, really getting to the heart of people's issues and concerns. Um, we really, we seek to understand um, what it is, what's their topic, their, you know, a lot of times people come and they, they think that they're going to not let you know that they have a particular special interest and they're going to pull one over on me, right? Uh, it doesn't happen, um, but they think they will. Uh, and so what we do is we, um, we, we understand that there are a, a certain group of people um, that are saying a certain thing, and then we reflect that back to the community. Here's something we heard. So for instance, what I just said there, and, and then everyone has the opportunity to comment on that, and people say like, who told you that? That's, you know, nobody does that. Nobody believes that. Um, 
Uh, and then they're also, you know, really um, sort of attuned to um, what is a, an outlying position, uh, who are the outliers, and, and, and all of that. And so, um, just why? I, I guess you have to come and make sure that that doesn't happen. You guys, it's really on you, um, but also on me. If you if you feel that I'm being fooled, um, then let me know. Uh, and staff will also, you know, staff's been here. They know all of you, right? They know all the groups, and they know, you know, so they know um, what to look out for as well. But it's a pretty unscientific process, you know, just being honest, as any any sort of personal face-to-face -face outreach process is. Uh, there's no science to it. Um, it, t it is a bit of art and a bit of magic. Um, and so we, you know, we really have to um, seek everyone out. Um, so that's not a great answer, but I know what you mean. Thanks for letting me know I need to be on guard here. <laughs> yes. So uh, your description of the process of uh, plant leaves uh, sounds very promising, very inclusive by nature, inclusive of how it's going to work. Um, but can you speak, to, uh, maybe this is a question more appropriate to some of the town officials, but can you speak to how this will work under the Long Range Planning Committee? Uh, if there is any intent to have standing members assigned to the committee for doing the comprehensive plan, or whether this will just be you know, the, uh, the responsibility of the committee as it is currently proposed. Sure. 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 The Planning <coughs> Committee um, is set up to be the conveners and the coordinators of the process. And that was set forth in the town chart. So um, there are an official number of, as by charter, official number of people on the Long Range Planning Committee. But I think the way we see it is as items come up for us to discuss or um, really find out more information about, um, the Long Range Planning Committee is open. Um, anybody can come to a Long Range Planning Committee meeting and we will make sure that we have those. Um, all of those agendas, all of the um, times and periods up on the website and we will push out this information to everybody who, who's here and anybody else who lets us know that they're interested. Um, so again, the real purpose of the Long Range Planning Committee is not to control information or control the process or control the, the um, um, input. It's really to help coordinate and make sure that um, they've done a good job, we've done a good job, the council's done a good job of getting all the um, different various viewpoints <coughs> input into the process. So, yeah. suggestion was to have a town-wide mailing of a survey um, to get input from, from everybody, uh, from each household. The tricky thing with that for me is um, creating the survey, uh, the, you know, wording the questions in the right way that aren't, you know, sort of skewed one way or the other. It's tough, but it can be done for sure. Uh, yes? Um, to follow up on the uh, question regarding special interest groups, uh, what is your conflict that you address and they are more than one group addressing the same issues to the point of uh, uh, support each other. Yeah, so the question is what's the conflict resolution technique that we use when different groups have different perspectives on different things? So 
let's just say 10 people come in and they say yes to something. 10 people come in and say no to something. It's completely equal. How do we resolve that? Um, so um, that's a good question. Um, in most communities that we work in, we don't even necessarily try to find like who's the majority so you win. You know, we don't. It's, that doesn't work that well. Um, what we try to do is again get to the motivation uh, and to understand the root. Because so many times people come in with a specific, um, their agenda is reflected in uh, an action. And the action is all that you hear. So I, I want you to do this. I want this is what I want to happen. And so if we can start to peel back the layers of the onion and really start to understand what's motivating them, what the fear is. A lot of times it's a fear-based motivation. What that fear is, I'm telling you guys all my secrets now. Um, so if we, if we can start to understand that, then we can really begin to um, start to find opportunities for the compromise. Not Again, not compromise where we both lose equally, um, but really that's where we start to focus on the innovation. Something that neither group thought of often is the solution. Uh, and everybody goes, oh, holy cow, this is awesome. Like, why didn't we think of this before? Um, because we have no um, stake in it, um, as we say in the South, we don't have a dog in that fight, um, then we, um, or here, more appropriately, a horse in that race, right? Um, so, uh, <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, yeah, both of those were appropriate in a negative way. Right. That's what happens when you're from away, right? Uh, um, so anyway, that's funny. Um, I'm probably, I'm, I've never blushed. I'm probably blushing enough, too. So we'll sort it out. Um, there's no easy answer. It's hard. That's part of, you know, the, the trick of dealing with the community, the, the hard part about it. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, people sometimes say I'm the Dr. Phil of the towns and cities. Um, so, <laughs> but you know it's okay because you made you made that statement innocently without any sense for to break. Right. Uh, you know, and we all know that that's something that's going on here. Uh, my question to you is about uh, process. Where I may be jumping ahead here. The work for the cart for the work. The question is, is what's uh, the official process by which the plan would be adopted and, and all of that? So I'm going to turn that over to staff. Sure. Um, so <coughs> there's a, a couple of things that, that happen. Um, one is um, before, the, before it, it would go to the council, um, we have a, uh, a need to, to fulfill some state requirements. And so we would send a draft plan um, to the state so that they sign off that we did all the things that would uh, that need to be included by state statute. So we want to make sure that we don't put forth or we don't send to cancel something that would not be um, signed off as as um, they don't approve it, but they do certify um, that you've met all the standards, that you've done all the pieces to the comp plan. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to do that first. And after that, it would go to the council. Um, I, I think we anticipated it sort of having the same type of adoption process that you would if you did an ordinance change or something like that. But I think last time, um, it may have been a, a slightly different process. But it's not, it's not, it's not an ordinance. Um, but I would see the same type of process going forward where the council takes it, they look at it, they have public hearings. Um, and then they can decide if they want to send it uh, to others to review, and then it would come back to them for some, a final adoption. Uh, but I would see that process as being very similar. If I could just 
echo or <coughs> build on that, I think part of that process from the time of Plan of Salusa and the, and the plan is drafted, there'll be a, a good period, some months, where the long range planning committee working with staff are bringing this out to the community and, mm -hmm. and touching base back with you all again to be sure have we captured it? Is this what we're thinking? And, and then we start that regulatory right. process. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Have you a process for engaging our young people? In other words, we have a thousand students in our high school. We have another seven or eight hundred at our middle school, and they're very good about giving input when it comes to when they're asked. I just you know if you've ever engaged our young people. Yeah, so the question is have we in, uh, planned for engaging the young people? Um, so we've already begun talking about that. Um, we know that, um, you know, if not asked, they're not likely to show up. Um, we have, um, we've done all sorts of things in other communities. Um, we've done um, essentially either assignments or contests um, where you have, for younger kids, uh, like an art contest, like draw your vision for the future. And as kids get older, um, then you maybe have a writing or essay kind of a thing, assignment or whatever. Um, they've. Um, you know, we've done even fun stuff at the Planet Blues, like scavenger hunts. We had, in one community we worked recently, uh, they provided child care and had bouncy houses. It was unbelievable. Um, but during the child care, they you know, sort of had them as pulled aside and did some exercises with them. So, um, uh, and when you said young people to start with, I was kind of like, okay, which young people? And you meant the really young people. But I also want to engage, knowing the statistics about you know, the demographics <laughs> here uh, in the state and in the town, um, reach out to the young people, the uh, young professionals, young families uh, as well, um, and uh, find ways to really make sure we have a good diverse mix in every group, um, not just people who you know have uh, the time because they retired or, or whatever to show up. Um, that becomes its own challenge because we know everybody's at the ballpark or you know doing PTA or those kinds of things. When you have great schools like you have here, they're out there. We just have to get to them. One community. Um, we were, uh, we had them, we knew that they all spent all their time at the baseball park. Uh, they didn't even vote because they were out there like all the time. So we had, we just had the people over the PA like an announce things every hour. Like little kids get up and make announcements about, come help us plan our future. Come participate in the comp plan. Uh, and then the other was like, just so you know, if we don't have a cool town, I'm leaving when I get out of high school. <laughs> so uh, so uh, there's all kinds of ways um, and we're going to work on that. Thank you. Yeah, so how are we going to engage all the committees? Um, so we are, um, each of the different subcommittees that has uh, topics that are related specifically to the elements of the plan will actually be doing work on the plan. Uh, not just us asking them, but hoping, you know, they're going to be writing stuff too, just so you know from these committees you're going to be writing. Um, and, uh, and really be um, you know, very interactive and, and participatory process with the community. And, um, but they're not going to be writing like what they think it needs to be. They're going to be writing like we are to reflect what we've heard through the process and from the community. Um, because again, nobody gets to just kind of take the process and run with it and it becomes their plan. We're very, I don't know, um, I, I sense that you guys are very sensitive to that. I'm personally very sensitive to that. Um, because we go through a lot, of, uh, a lot of effort, we jump through a lot of hoops and do a lot of things to try to get people to come and participate. And for anybody to be able to kind of take that and sort of um, taint that process, because I stand up here to you and I say, we're here with, with blank pieces of paper. We're here with a clean slate to start with this, except for building off of what you've already done. Um, we're here in a true and open, transparent process. I can't say that um, if I know that there's a committee down the way that's going to kind of steal your plan. Um, so I'm, I'm very sensitive to it, and I can sense from the questions that you guys are too. So we'll all work together to make sure um, that this process is what you are looking for. I, I would also add most of our committees have staff support uh, yeah. and council liaisons are, are very active. 
currently. So I think there's multiple opportunities to make sure input from the committees or is able to get back to consultants and, and uh, see itself in the plan. Yeah. And just one more piece. We're going to be, um, uh, staff is going to be meeting with um, all of the <coughs> committees during a, a summit process later in June, and we're going to talk about how this ha how this happens and what the challenge is and, you know, how each of the committees may want to go about doing their um, their share of the comp plan or their, their uh, sections. So that's what the uh, summit is going to be. The all board committee summit is going to focus on the comprehensive plan and talk about, you know, again, how the committees go about doing their work and, and what's expected and what their challenges are and what questions they have. So we'll be working on all of that out with the committees themselves too. And in the end too, I, I see so many communities, they, they want so much for the plan to be perfect before they're willing to adopt it. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's not a big deal here because you have a nice plan to start with. Um, but I would say uh, if there are hot topics where there is not a clear consensus on a, something as you mentioned earlier, um, don't let it hold your whole plan up for years. You know, like you, it's sometimes let's move something forward because you guys have development pressure that's coming. You know, you have, we're working on a map right now, um, uh, uh, the town is for us, um, showing all the different parcels that are available for development. And you have multi-hundred acre parcels available for development, right? And so if you mess around kind of trying to wordsmith and get your plan just perfect before you do anything with it, you can, opportunities pass by. And Lewiston, literally the planning director called me and said, hey, you know that one of those main intersections where we all, the community wanted to make this great neighborhood center? Um, and it was in the plan and we drew, we drew it in the comp plan and had beautiful rendering and everyone's excited about it. Uh, an application just came across my desk for them to put a gas station on the corner there and uh, our plan's not adopted yet, what do I do? And I said, nothing, you're screwed. You can't do anything, right? Um, so get your plan adopted so it doesn't happen next time. So anyway, I don't say that to, um, you know, to pressure you because you want it to be great uh, and it will be great. Um, but if there's some sort of a uh, item where you're hung up on it, my recommendation for you to consider is to not let that hang up your plan. Um, so we want to go, we want to move quickly, um, as quickly as you can when you have to do a whole town plan, but um, so that you guys will stay involved. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at your slide where you say you need to put on special character yeah. and make sure you, and I want to say that. Uh, Scarborough's special character is that it's a land of many grasses. The heart of this community is a smart plant. Yeah. And all of the water that runs into it that feeds that heart. So my two, my two words for you in planning, pervious services. Pervious <laughs> services. All right. Got it. Yes. I've, I've got a question just in terms of community involvement. Is the plan of Belusa and possibly a survey the only way you're going to involve the community? No. No, we'll have other, well not, the question was, is plan of Palooza and possibly the survey the only way to involve the community? And no is the answer. Um, the, uh, as I said before, the staff will be coming and doing other things on their own without us. Um, and just, you know, hopefully coming to the neighborhoods and coming, you know, what we hope is that you're going to get tired of hearing about it. You know, and you're going to, you know, be tired. You're like, we already told you. Like, quit asking us. That's what we hope. Um, uh, but that takes time, and they have, you know, this is a small town with a small staff. Um, and uh, and so we're going to, you know, do our best to find as many ways. That's why the online stuff, even though not everybody goes online, it's why it's really a nice tool because it's available at any time, and, and all you have to do is monitor it, you know. Um, so we really, you know, we're going to work hard uh, for you guys to make you know, sure there's plenty of opportunities. Um, but the thing that you'll find is, um, besides just the um, knowing that you've been listened to as, as the individual, the thing that you'll find is it's pretty amazing, and we see this in every town we go to. You start to hear the same things very quickly. The, you know, the issues come up. Not to say that, therefore, we don't need any people to come. I'm just saying, like, I ne that's why I said earlier, I never worry about how many people participate, because you can only get people you know, to participate if they're willing to. Um, but you don't have to worry about the plan being ruined because you didn't have, you know, 10% of the population or, or whatever. Um, but, again, I like more people and more opportunities. So, 
So here, yeah. yeah. Good question. So, do we have any plans to reach out to the to the tourists uh, who come during the summer? Um, oh, sorry, I totally misunderstood. I said the opposite of what you're saying, right? Okay. So, the summer residents, the people who come during summer. So that mean that is the how do you refer to them here? Part-time residents. They, they different places property. are different. What? They own property summer, and so they live summer. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so in, in Snowmass they call them part-time or just full-time residents, that's what they refer to, seasonal stuff. So anyway, I get what you mean. Um, so, huh? And so in places like this that are wonderful enough to have people who want to be here sometime and be elsewhere and, and all of that, and, um, you know, we, like I said, in, in Snowmass, we were, we were having to reach out to the people who this was like, you know, their second, third, or fourth home uh, in Snowmass. And so how do we reach out to this, somebody who's in Arizona or, you know, wherever? Um, and so we had to, you know, get online. We had to make sure that things were delivered to them, um, you know, uh, where they were. Um, and then also we did things at different times of year when they were there. Um, and so figuring out, you know, how to, how to, to, to do that, um, you know, and we'll record, I hope, seems like we'll record the Planapalooza stuff. And so hopefully we can get everybody, maybe one of the movies on the, on the lawn one night is, you know, Planapalooza stuff, you know, I don't know, but, um, uh, just finding ways to reach out to all groups, um, is, is key. And that's, these are the kind of questions that are really helpful. Um, for those of us who aren't from here, because we start to identify like, who are those, those different constituency groups that we need to reach out to. And um, I would add, if you have any thoughts on how to best reach out to people, please do let us know. Uh, because, you know, we're working through that right now with staff on how do we make sure that we reach out to each constituency in town and what's the best way to do that. So we're also looking to all of you to tell us. I mean, you, you live here and you know these folks. What's the best email address for them to send ideas to? Um, why don't you send it to uh, planning director at ci. dot scarborough. dot me. dot us. Oh. Sorry about that last yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll send. That I, I will actually. We'll send. We're going to be sending everybody who's here, um, particularly if you've signed up. Um, you gave us your email address. We'll be pushing out a couple of things to you. One, um, a link to the website, which will um, really document everything that's happening and all meetings and all the um, musings about the comp plan from staff and others. Um, so we'll be having a, a single web portal that you can get to. Um, and that should be ready, I believe, tomorrow. So we'll be pushing that out um, and you'll be able to respond back and we'll have some uh, we'll have an email uh, on that on that site as well. Yeah. Um, but sorry, the long email. That's the, the yeah. <laughs> you can yeah you can be planning director. You can use uh, J C H A, which would be just J C H A C E. But we'll get all that information out to you. So we'll try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Yeah, but and, and really, you know, like your ideas, and, and you know, even if you're not on a committee or communication committee or you know, think tank or whatever, um, getting those uh, your ideas to us at any time, you know, get it to staff so they're like the clearinghouse. Uh, uh, we constantly throughout the project will get stuff from like, hey, somebody just sent us this thing. Make sure we think about this. Um, and then yeah. I was just going to say one of the reasons we introduced folks at the outset is. Our long range planning committee members, our council, <coughs> they, they live with, it's right next to you, they're your neighbors. So if you see them in the streets or at the store, stop them and have a conversation. They'll certainly pass along those words to us. We, you know, they often share with us and we support that. Yes, sir. Uh, 
at the end of this comprehensive plan, we have a comprehensive plan in place. How, how, I know all these people have wonderful ideas and changes, but changes take money. Yeah. And they, they need to come up with a plan after this to pay for it. Yeah. And I was on a plan in the Connecticut, and we were, I, mean, I spent many nights doing a plan development, doing a, uh, uh, what do you The money, trying to find the money. We had a budget. Yeah. A budget. Yeah. Uh, capital improvements budget. Yeah. <laughs> had to be submitted to the state. And the funny thing is, once the budget was approved, they didn't have to fund it. Mm. So we had this plan, all done, spent months doing it, and they never put a dime into it. Yeah. And every time one of the projects came up, it was, where are we going to get the money? Where are we going to get the money? Right. They run for the government, the government hangs the carrot, says, oh, we'll give you this much, and we'll give you this much. So they go crazy and they tax everybody. And so I would rather see a comprehensive plan paid for. Yeah. Especially, you know, you can't do anything now because you don't know how extensive it's going to be. It should be prioritized. You know what are the key issues and what it should be directed the money to right away to solve the biggest problem. Yeah. Yeah, so the suggestion is to have uh, a, a strategy or plan in place to help pay for the things that are in the plan, and how do we go about doing that? Um, our approach to that is uh, kind of twofold. One is, um, while a comprehensive plan uh, has some big ideas in it, we also like to have small ideas that you can implement quickly and easily that don't cost a lot of money to help you build momentum um, and, and excitement for it. Um, the other thing is... Um, um, you know, figuring out ways to crowdsource, you know, to get the community involved in actually doing these things and, and making them happen. Um, uh, and then the last thing is we try, um, while we need to be realistic about the things that we're uh, visioning for the future, um, we try not to let the practical realities of it, like, hold us back from dreaming big, uh, hold us, us being all of us together. Um, and so and that's hard to do sometimes, especially in New England, because you like you guys are super practical and like very frugal and all of that stuff. So I get it. Like why why have something new if you can you know fix something you know and, like, it's a it's wonderful thing about New England. But um, but you know there are things that you guys have already done a lot of the heavy lifting on you know facilities and things like that. Um, so I, I think it's a great point though. I, I would just add undoubtedly there'll be some. Public investment that might be considered or contemplated or required, uh, but having a plan to look to to help leverage um, to, to identify that in the first place is, is important. Uh, but to leverage private investment, I, I really think that uh, right uh, through land use and other ways to encourage the private investment can pay for a lot of what what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, and, and also too, there, the private development side of things moves forward on its own dime. And this document, as much as it talks about where to have new public facilities and things you have to pay for as a town, it talks about how that development should occur. And that's really, in some ways, where, where we really put a lot of focus on uh, is kind of getting that right. Um, but um, one thing that we, um, I'll just say this now, one thing that we see differently in, uh, in a comprehensive planning process than maybe um, some other plans do is trying to make the comprehensive plan the vision document, not the zoning document. Um, we so often see the comp plan like really get deep in the weeds with zoning stuff, you know, talking about building heights and, and you know, densities and all of these things. <coughs> and what we'll do is focus on character. The character, I mean, the thing you can actually understand as a regular person. Like if I showed you a hundred pictures up here and said, what's the density that you see in this photograph? You would all fail. The test. You, none of you, nobody, even me, and I look at aerial photos all the time. Like nobody can understand density as an abstract concept, and so we're left using that as a crude tool. So we know well, less is better than more, right? And that's kind of the way that people think about it today. Uh, and so we really focus on the character. Um, so when you go like, you know, we did a downtown plan, we did three plans in Portland, New Hampshire, <coughs> a wonderful, beautiful, historic city, very precious to everyone who lived there. And 
when you walk down the street, it's an amazing street, and it has single family houses, and then you look on the side of the house and there's eight meters. So that single family house is actually an eight unit apartment building, right? And no one cares. No one cares for this eight units. They care that this street feels great. We love this street, you know, and that's, that's what normal people, that's the way you experience the community. And so the, the plan will focus on those kinds of things, the experiential qualities of the town, the, the character, what makes it special, and the things you want to protect and, or enhance or transform. Um, so if you're looking for this to be sort of like the proto-zoning, um, you know, it's not going to be um, the way that we, the way that we write conference and things. Um, so we can talk about that more if I don't know why I felt compelled to share that with you right now. Um, who else? Yeah. 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 The question is how have we um, brought new ideas to other communities, uh, inspiration that we've learned elsewhere. Um, <coughs> what we find is that um, a lot of communities, while they might be wildly different in their character, um, they have a lot of similarities. Certain communities have a lot of similarities in what's going on there, um, or you know their passions about things. And so, um, let's just say, and, and you guys. Um, you know, it's likely that we're going to learn a lot here uh, because you guys are actually doing innovative, progressive stuff already. Um, and so, like, for instance, when we were working in Burlington, Vermont, you know, there was nearly nothing new we could tell them. You know, they're, like, doing all this cool stuff already. They're looking around the country, and, you know, we, we were just there to make sure it didn't get messed up, you know. Um, and so I think we're probably going to have find a lot of that here. Um, but, you know, I like to think about... Um, there's an amazing innovation consulting firm called IDEO, um, and what IDEO does is they started out making um, products, like helping with industrial design of products. So they, they helped invent the first mouse for the computer, or the pump, the toothpaste pump, you know, you push the button and the toothpaste comes out top. And um, their clients started realizing that um, their innovation process was really cool, and it could be, their company was cool, and so that could be applied uh, to their to the to the companies that they're working for, and so they get called into all kinds of different companies now to help them innovate and think of things. Well, they got called into maybe Johns Hopkins like hospital system or something like that, and um, and they created a team uh, of people to help them. Their their process the project was to assess and improve the experience in the emergency room, and so they had sociologists and they had um, uh, all sorts of uh, a unique team. And the first thing they did was they sent somebody through. They checked them in as if they had an emergency. And they were sort of noting things that were going on all the time. And what they realized is the whole triage process and the quick, fast action and all that was very similar to the pit in NASCAR. And so they started looking at NASCAR for inspiration. Wildly different experiences, but NASCAR had something to teach them. And so they said, well, what, is, what about this? And there's this thing that they do. And so I'm hoping that as we go through this process that you guys are going to trigger us to think of things that we've seen that might be maybe even unrelated and apply them in an in interesting way. But we have to first learn about this place and recognize what the connections are amongst all your parts and pieces and who you are. Like who, who are the, you know, in Lewiston, one of the most controversial things we did that ended up getting edited out of the comp plan in the end because they couldn't ever agree, by the way. Um, was we had this concept called the five faces of Lewiston. It's just like, here's the, the types of people we've met. And they're like, oh no, there's six. Oh, well, there's seven. Oh, I don't like that one. So let's take that one. It was, it was the craziest thing that they got hung up on it. Finally, I was like, just take it out. Oh my God. And, um, but when you start to learn that, like who the different types of people are that are here, and you know, you don't want to categorize and stereotype or whatever, but there are certain groups that you can start to identify. And once you understand that, that starts to tell you a lot of things, and you can start coming up with solutions and ideas of, based around that. And then each of those um, groups has their own interests and desires and fears, and, and it's just kind of like a very iterative process that kind of builds upon itself. And so that's why it counts on and so much about this process that I keep talking about, this pure process. Um, so anyway, that was 
that's a hard question to answer, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Some of it will be census data. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I realized working with people that don't have the data don't know how they feel about it. And so when So what you just described is what I call relevant data. So all those things are relevant because they start painting the picture and telling the story and, and, and teaching us about this place and a lot of times you guys, because you, you know, a lot of people sit around looking at data about yourself. And, and so it's like, oh wow, I didn't realize that that was you know, what the you know, average house costs now. Um, and so that will all be part of that process, will come out. Um, the, the tricky thing is how do we, um, how do we get that to you guys like um, prior to Planet Palooza, for instance. I mean, a lot of times what we'll do is is the things that are relevant or related to the things we've heard so far are just like, we'll actually in the opening presentation of the Planet Palooza say, did you know this? Seriously, you know, and so that that's kind of like building that common language, building the foundation by upon which the rest of the event of the Planet Palooza is built upon. Um, but, you know, how uh, the different sort of sources and opportunities we have, we can get it out there. It just may not look as pretty as it will in the final. Um, so relevant data, perfect. And, and, and it's funny, you can, I think in some ways the way you can think about relevant data is the number of things that you can kind of come up with off the top of your head that might be useful. And when you start seeing like all the, like think about all the census data that's out there, like so much of it you literally just sort of like, you know, take that out, take that out, yeah, I don't need that, I don't need that. Um, so that's a great question. Right, doesn't mean we're not compiling it. Right. So for those of you who want to see it, we're going to have it. <coughs> just like you, that I could say, don't plan on putting it all in the plan. Right. But we have it. Because um, that's, matter of fact, we have a list of, I don't know, 3,000 things that we need to uh, prepare for these guys so that they can start their, their work. So yeah. we will have all of that. And we will make as much detail as somebody wants available. Um, any way we collect it, we will make it available on on the website. But yeah. we don't provide life preservers, so if you start drowning right. in the data, it's on you. <laughs> right. And I, I do fully expect at the committee level, we'll be sharing the relevant data, probably the details mm -hmm. of that data at the committee level, so they can skip through it yeah. and maybe Absolutely. help inform what is relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to just mention that, like we said, you know, this is the outset of the process. We're, we're starting to put the list of data we need to compile, so we, we're really at that outset. So, um, you know, we will make that available. It will be out there. We just don't have it yet either. We're Jay and I have a busy summer plan. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was just not here. I think I thought what Jay was
Thank you. The other piece I'd like to share about um, service services and uh, something that I've learned since I've been here, um, you're one of the geographically largest towns in the name by square mile. Yeah. Now, some of the folks from town staff and folks involved in the community are saying that know that. But a lot of folks who live in town don't know that. And so, often the, the first trigger in people's minds is, oh, wonderful opportunity to develop. Yeah. And then actually, the first, you know, kind of early in the community, there's a lot of large parts of the community. Um, there's also opportunities for conservation. And for us, this really is something that has a wonderful balance of smart growth and conserved natural areas. So I, I don't want to miss out on that fact of Scarborough's size and that we still have terrific opportunities for possibly repeat all that for TV, but that was wonderful. Um, so the, um, I think part of it is going with the summit. Um, so the summit is sort of kicking off the figuring out the logistics of it. Because believe it or not, you know, we like to come to you before we've started. Like we want to like start our process with the community. So a lot of times maybe everything's figured out and fleshed out. Uh, and then the consultant comes and says, here's how we're going to do it. Um, but for us, um, we're, we're figuring some of these things out as we go. So um, there's going to be a summit of the committees. Right, but we, we've often had um, um, outside boards who are, if you're working <coughs> with town, like the land trust, we are happy to, to have you at the summit. Um, as well as, you know, I think there's the Audubon, there's a, there's a chamber, um, there's by local. There's a lot of different groups out there, and um, we've been busy collecting all of these different different groups. And I think we can have them all in various meetings. We are also available to come out to different boards who are uh, meeting, and we can talk about the comprehensive plan. Um, so there's a variety of, re of ways um, to be involved in that. So we will receive invitations. You will. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I think too. I mean, if this, we haven't talked about this, but it's in in my estimation, the the committee that would be working on a specific part would reach out to you, to all the, you know, just like we would if we were, you know, if there were no committees, we would be reaching out to you. And then also too, you guys, you know, when we have the meeting at the Planet Palooza about you know sort of environmental concerns or whatever it's called, that's also. I mean, that's in a lot of ways. Um, um, I don't want you guys, again, because you have committees and because staff is willing to do this stuff, to underestimate uh, or write off the plan of Palooza. For us, that's the most important part of this, for, for us. Um, uh, we'll get all the other information, but that's the most um, tangible way um, for us to, to understand where this kind of whole document and the plan and the concept needs to go. So the spokesman, is that just a process description? Or yeah, it's yeah. just very... So it's not a deliberative, you know? No. I, I think a lot of what Brian said at the outset is, you know, we don't have quite all the answers, so folks have thoughts on how you'd like to plug in. 
that's what we're here for. We're really at that process stage. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so for the plan of Palooza, are there segments, for instance, you would invite people who want to, to deal with the environment to a segment so several yeah. hours, and then there will be another segment at another time instead of you know, people needing to set aside three days? No, no, the three days, you don't have to be there the whole three days, right? You can be, and it's open, you're welcome to be. We'll have chairs and you can sit. Um, but um, the, the, there's, there's going to be a schedule. So you'll see like opening presentation and then you'll see the topical meetings. But the only thing that, um, that won't happen, uh, well, won't uh, happen exclusively, is there, it won't be by invitation. It's everyone. Right. It's open to everyone. You might get a special, like a reminder, like, hey, you came, so forget to come. But it's open to everyone. We don't want it to ever feel like somebody has to be feel invited to come. Yes? That, that's sort of related to the question of <coughs> all of this is open to everyone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Any time a town community is meeting, you're welcome to come attend and visit. Absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. participate. Yeah. 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 I would encourage the committee to get the public participation. We need another committee. Well, I, I, I don't know if that's, uh, or if there are going to be some additions to the Long Range Planning Committee. You know, I'm not an expert on governance. But what I'm hearing, um, that, uh, and what I'm being told, uh, I'm a little skeptical that that is going to uh, compare to the kind of dedicated uh, focus and participation of input for the process the last time this was. So one question I have is, if you have a 14-person committee um, that is dedicated to the plan, how, do, how does that increase participation at large? With the, you know, like the four, 14 people, let's, I get that. Well, I would but answer this question this way. I would say I think it would uh, ensure that there would be representative input and uh, people that are dedicated enough to want to devote their time to the process. Number one. Number two, I would say that the current, and I, I know some of the people that are on the Long Range Planning Committee were actually involved in, you know, in this process previously, but without any change to that, how will we know that that will be adequate to the task? Yeah. So I'll say this um, we've never done this multi committee, even you know, single committee process before. Um, we've always relied on, solely on, our process. So for me, I hear this overwhelming concern in the community. Um, I'll learn more about why at some point, I'm sure. Um, to me, I can't imagine any more participation than what we're providing. Um, it may not be sufficient for Scarborough. Um, I guess what I often say is um, when we start off a process from a place of concern or fear or skepticism of a process, um, and you guys don't know me, you don't know me at all, um, it's a challenge for me because what I want to say is trust me um, and you're like, yeah, sure, right, you know, that's what everybody says. Um, I don't know how um, to to give you guys the um, comfort level that you're looking for at this moment. What I'll say is this, um, this is a dynamic process and as we go through it, I think, unless that tells me something different, um, if you find that you aren't feeling like this is a participatory enough process and that it is being sort of 
guided um, by you know uh, something besides the purest of intentions uh, and a pure process, then at that point maybe we change course and do something differently. Um, but I get nervous when we come to a community and we're asked to do something different than we've ever done before that's worked every single time um, in all across the country. Um, so uh, again though, uh, every place is different and every place is unique. So, um, so maybe what we need to do is really you know, kind of, I hear you, all of you, and maybe what we need to do is, you know, sort of pow out -wow with staff and uh, kind of figure out, okay, what, what can we do to address these concerns um, moving forward? So, yes, sir. The counterpoint to that. Um, I don't think you're saying this because I understand the but I think what you were saying is the long range plan is maybe that's already set and they need every week and they already have been working on this. I think what he was saying is I sort of agreed with that and then we also and say, oh, this might work out But the original town plan in 1999, we had 30 people. And we all sat around the table, and then I think uh, it was much that you know, we had we had a fire the fire chief and the fire representative and the chief, and they came to every meeting, and we had three from education, and we had four from conservation, and we had you know one from planning, and they were sitting there listening to everybody else. So my concern is conservation, and the city said, well, we need this. Right. At least that everybody that's sitting there is talking about the same thing. And I think that this gentleman, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, has been concerned that we have a small little group that of the plane, which I know it doesn't sound like that's how you're doing it, but this is the spirit. Sure. I, I get a um, small little group when you take the data and sit through it and decide what was you know, more important or not more important, whereas before we had this big group. That was representative of the whole. Exactly. What if we Yeah. What if we did this? What if we had no committee? Well, the town charter dictated the committee. The charge uh, for this process was to this committee. So, uh, as, as I recall the history of that, the last time the charter commission convened, they did a number of things, including this update of uh, or creation of this committee. And as I recall, it had everything to do with the recognition that we are nearing the end of implementation of the current plan, and within a year or so, or two, or three, we would be meeting here tonight. Um, and so it was really kind of preparing for that. And I, I just need to say to the issue of commitment, uh, I'm amazed that there's many of the folks that are on the Long Range Planning Commission were in fact involved 10 years ago, and it seemed to be very involved all the way through. Now, if you don't like the direction of the town and what happened over the last 10 years, and I might understand why you have some reservations. But the issue is not the issue of inclusion. I thought I heard commitment as a concern of yours. It's just a, a final point. What I'm hearing is that we have a far more elaborate pro uh, process, perhaps, and, and I hope that it might some opportunity. Just appreciate the committees alone. There are probably 100 residents involved. Through that process, and so there's, there's just multiple ways to to pull in that input and make sure the final result is represented. Just a, a couple of things. One, I, I know Alan from the Long Range Planning Committee wants to say something too. I do want to emphasize the role of the committee is as conveners and coordinators, not as, as decision makers. Decision makers. Council, you know, that's that's just want to emphasize coordinators and conveners. So their job is to make sure that they're reaching out to all of those folks. And that's been their modus operandi for the next for the last 
some years, but I think Anne wanted to say something. Yeah, thank you. Um, for those people who were not aware, prior to the Long Range Planning Committee, there was the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee, which basically took what came out of the, uh, the uh, Comp Plan of 2006, <coughs> and then section by section by section, literally implemented what the plan was. Now, the Comp uh, Implementation Committee and now the Long Range Planning Committee I believe has had the success that it has had in working through our past comprehensive plan for one reason, in my opinion. And that opinion is every time we came to an area that we needed to approach areas of town for change or potential change, the way we implemented that was to go to that area of the town and hold meetings with with the people in that section of town and get their in their input. Get, you know, we, we gave them a rough, here's what we think, what do you think, took that input, went back, reworked it, came back to you again and said, we've taken your input, this is what we've seen, how does this feel? And if the or it came back to us at that point that we had heard and we had taken care of the issues, then we finalized it and we brought those changes to the board. So the committee has never in itself said this is the way it's going to be. All of the decisions that we have made have really been the result of going out into the public, into the community, soliciting your input and creating whatever change needed to be, be created based on that. And I, you know, I, I can't see that being any different because that really has been what we feel is the success of the committee to this point. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a role in coordination and, and kind of interfacing all the committees. Um, we have, you know, in the end, we are really, you know, the primary author of the document. Um, the, uh, but here we have, because you guys are frugal um, and, you know, we have these committees and people who are willing to put in the time, um, one of the things that we're doing is, and the reason I'm saying we've not done it this way before, is we have access to these committees, who some of them who happen to be already working on documents and reports related to their areas of uh, expertise. And so our job is to take the things that we get from the committees. Now, mind you, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but most of the people in the committees have never written a comp plan, right? And so what we get is going to be helpful, um, but it's probably not going to be something we can just say, oh, thanks, that goes in the comp plan. Right, it's going to be you know become um, uh, the clay that we have to then mold into a sculpture, right? Um, and so that's our role. And there will be other parts that will you know need to be probably drafting um, without help. Um, then all of the um, the public process that we're doing, the Planet Palooza, um, the uh, design side of things that we talked about for these areas of, of special um, design consideration. Uh, creating a document that you want to read, all of those things. Um, so yes, to your point, in most circumstances, there are no committees. There is no other input than than our process that we put in place, and then we go write it all from scratch. 
Um, so this is a, a, a unique thing for us. So that's why I'm like, that's, you can sense my um, not knowing how to address your, your concerns, but I'm being like, good grief, this is like the most inclusive process in the universe. Um, so uh, the only difference is, um, you know, maybe in some cases we would have, uh, we've done planet pollutants that are a few days longer. Um, but, you know, that's the, the real substantive difference. Um, but we don't often uh, have the opportunity um, to have, you know, staff going into the neighborhoods like they're talking about doing. Like that stuff is really um, above and beyond um, what we normally would do, which is, which is I think is wonderful. Because um, I think that, um, to some of your points, like finding those particular groups that you may have to sort of um, meet them where they are rather than expecting them to come to a central location um, becomes uh, uh, possible in doing it that way. So, yes? Uh, I see the word verbal confession and, and your, your, I think, your role as consultant to guide us through the issue that the town has come to you and asked you to guide us through. Because we have all these committees, it's very difficult to rule by committees. So I see you as, as, and your staff and your company as a place, like you said, like a clear system and somebody who's a clear system to bring all of, all of our committees and our ideas together because otherwise, how do we all come together? Because we have all these committees who are doing really wonderful things, but they have to hear from somewhere. And what better, I'm so pleased that the town has done this and brought a professional in to guide us through the process. Yeah, that's so a great we can bring that team to us to say, this is what we learned from you all, this is what we put together for you, look at it, what do you feel about it? And I understand the process correctly. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. So, I'm, I'm pleased. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm pleased that you're pleased. Thank you for that. Um, the, um, and the other thing is, too, um, just being on, on, on a committee and being willing to put in the time does not mean that you have no agenda. Right? And so we are here to be the ones with no agenda. Right? And so each of you is on the committee for a various reason. Um, and so we have to be able to some of your questions of course, see through some of that um, and help um, find ways to, um, you know, uh, if you will, harness that energy in a positive direction that works for everyone, you know? And so, like, for instance, um, one of the things we see so often is, you know, somebody walks in in Lycra with a pointy helmet, I know they're a bike enthusiast, and that's the thing that they're going to, they're going to pound on, pound on, pound on, if, and if they had it their way, and only their way is all about bikes, and we have it now, a bike plan, not a comp plan, right? And so I've got to be there to say, that's awesome. Let's figure out how we're going to incorporate bikes and Lycra into <laughs> complete streets and, and all of that, you know? And so those are the, the kinds of things that we do through this process. Um, and uh, I'm really excited, though, because I've never had this level of, like, concern for the process before, even in very participatory places. I mean, it, so this is, I'm excited for the challenge of having you guys be happy about the process uh, in the end. Um, what we, I always tell the story, uh, I shouldn't tell it now, but because uh, you won't, I'll tell it anyway. So, so Matt, who's on the team um, with us, uh, he's just, uh, he's amazing. Uh, he's a uh, uh, an amazing expert in regional issues and, and uh, infrastructure and all of that, but he's very much black and white, you know, and I'm all sorts of shades of gray and blue and red and all these things, right? And so, um, and so uh, Matt, you know, he gets frustrated with me, uh, especially when I tell the story, but, you know, we do a, um, at, at the end of the closing presentation, uh, I turn around, we're in Carmel, Indiana, and there was a woman who had been kicking my butt since day one of the plan of blues, that she was just, she came mad. She was ready. She was skeptical. We were there to ruin things, you know? And um, and I turned around at the end of the closing presentation at the last one. I said, do we have any questions or comments? And she was crying, and I said, oh, God. <laughs> I'm really screwed up now. I think I'll go home now. Never mind about the questions. And she stood up, and she said, you listened. You really listened. Thank you. 
and for me that was that was that was everything you know and um, and so I hope that you guys are going to feel that through this process um, it's hard to do um, and uh, but I will also say this in in communities where I've come where I've seen a level of skepticism about process uh, there are often um, uh, shadows uh, and things that are misinterpreted as scary. Um, so for instance, like the time at which after we've done the Planet Palooza and we're going and we're drafting, uh, writing things like, what's going on? They've, they've you know, sequestered and there's all this stuff happening and we don't know what it is and, and really we're just working really hard for you um, and people get concerned about that. And so I would just ask that um, uh, until we prove otherwise through this process, um, that you guys will afford us the the you know, um, uh, the luxury of of trusting us um, to to guide you through this process and we have the time because here's the thing while we get you know the the, the checks that we get say town of Scarborough we're here representing you guys the crowd and everyone who's not here who's not on a committee as much as we're here representing them and their the boss and you guys are the boss um, and so it's um, it works. Uh, if you show up and you bring people with you, because um, forget about committees at you know seven o'clock in the morning. Like I want you at Planet Palooza doing fun stuff, right? Uh, don't forget about committees. I'm just saying um, that's what we need to come. So bring people every time there's an opportunity. Bring more and more people um, because that's the way to truly have an open process as we go through this together. Um, I would like for those of you who were involved in that 30 member group or who have intimate knowledge of that. Um, to, to talk to me at some point, uh, even afterwards here, because I, I want to know and understand more about how, uh, what that committee did specifically and, and how a group of that many people were able to work through topics and, uh, and come to some point of actually having a document that is produced. Um, so I'm fascinated by that uh, and would love for you guys to teach me. Um, so. Uh, I know it's getting late, um, uh, and I have one more here. Yeah. I, I just want to offer space to the public library will dedicate a spot for announcements, updates, anything that needs to be help, particularly those people who are not online and who mm -hmm. have the internet access, we'd be glad to facilitate any information that we can drop to Perfect. You. So the library is going to help anybody who doesn't have access to the internet and that kind of stuff. And, and also, too, when we're done with the plan, if you would, um, do you guys have a, like a wooden podium? Like I want like this plan to be like you know in a, with a light. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no no kidding. Like after we go through this together, like it, it'll deserve that, um, and it'll be something that you know towns used to they would like leather bind their plan. It was unbelievable. So I would love it if you guys would commit right now to doing this. What kind of buffer would you like? I'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, so yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Monday the 23rd.